So, Doctor, let's begin with the latest coronavirus news. Talk to us about this world sharing initiative that's been issued by the Biden administration. Well, I think this is a really important reminder that the pandemic is not over until it's over everywhere in the world. Now that the United States has done so well with getting vaccines uh, to a number of people, we still have a ways to go in the U.S., but since we've been doing um, our share and getting a lot of people vaccinated, it's now our time to step up and help the rest of the world. You know, we think of where vaccines are being distributed is less than 1% of vaccines have gone to the developed world. Uh, and as long as there are places that have transmission of this virus, there are opportunities variants to form um, and and the fear is that if, if this goes on long enough we might see a variant that can evade the protectiveness of our vaccines all right and let's bring things back home let's talk about the current trends of the coronavirus that we're seeing in the united states because it seems as though if officials have their eyes on helping people in other parts of the world things must be trending in a good way here at home Things are doing better in the U.S. Um, you know, we're at our lowest daily rate of infections in almost a year, actually a little over a year. Uh, hospitalizations are down, deaths are down. But what we are seeing is we're seeing that the people who are getting infected are the people who are not yet vaccinated. So we've seen a, a, a rise in the number of teenagers and young children who have been getting sick and in some cases being hospitalized. And the risk of getting sick and hospitalized and even dying from COVID if you're not yet vaccinated, even among adults, adults who are eligible, is just as high now as it was in the winter months when you adjust for those people who have been vaccinated. So even though things are doing better, there are pockets of the country that are not uh, vaccinated at high levels. And there are communities that either don't have access to the vaccines and we're working on that by trying to get you know, um, the message out, getting the information out about why they should get vaccinated, getting them access to the vaccines. Um, but also recognizing that, you know, some of the disparities that have been highlighted by COVID are actually being borne out with what's happening now. If you look in Washington, D.C., for example, you know, all 85 percent of new infections are among the African-American community and they are only vaccinated about half the rate as the white community in D.C. And so I think that highlights an important need to target folks who are not yet getting vaccinated, understand the reasons for their hesitancy uh, and trying to meet them and, and understand how we can get them to get vaccinated for their own safety, but for the safety of their community as well. Good to hear that things are at least trending in the right direction, although, as you mentioned, there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, you know, as we all con continue to uh, prepare for a post pandemic world is bringing a lot of stress for people. Some people are having anxiety just about returning to the office. I would like to know um, how is the medical community holding up through all of this? Because you all have really been on the front lines of this fight. Well, I think part of it is is having looking out you know looking out for each other over the last year um this has been you know certainly at our hospital but at hospitals across the country you know everyone is pitched in from the frontline healthcare providers to the people who work to keep the lights on everyone has worked uh, in the COVID response and that's true for the community too you know people who have been you know following social distancing recommendations wearing masks getting vaccinated they're keeping each other safe they're keeping people out of the hospital with COVID, and that allows us to actually care for um, the patients who have other diseases that have always existed uh, but were sort of given a back seat for a short period of time while we figured out how we were going to build capacity to take care of all the COVID patients we were seeing last spring and over the winter and dr garibaldi it's no secret that you are also known as the physician and musician i love to hear how your passion for music has helped you get through such a long journey? Well, I think for me personally, you know, guitar and, and music in general has been my release for the pandemic. You know, back in March of 2020, when our unit, the biocontainment unit, Johns Hopkins, was one of the first units taking care of COVID patients, I actually moved out of my house for a couple of weeks because we didn't know how safe we were going to be. We didn't know what we were dealing with. And, and the two things I brought with me, I brought my laptop and I brought my guitar. Um, and that was really what helped me get through um, it's really one of the only times where I can kind of shut my brain off and, and really just relax. Uh, but through the, you know, the, the months after that, you know, we started thinking about ways that we could use music to help others. Um, unfortunately, you know, sometimes I'll bring my guitar into patient rooms, but I haven't been able to do that with COVID because my guitars wouldn't uh, withstand the cleaning processes that we have in place for things that go into patient rooms. Uh, but I've been playing guitar um, early on when we had our incident command center. We would uh, have these reflection moments, and sometimes I would, I would get asked to come play guitar there. And uh, Robin Lewis Cherry, who's a nurse that I worked with when I was an intern almost 20 years ago, she actually wrote a wonderful poem about uh, all of our shared, shared struggles during COVID and, and asked me to, to put it to music. And then we were able to record a, a, a really lovely piece where I was playing guitar in the background with some original music, and, and her poem was highlighted in, in the foreground. Um, and Dr. so hopefully Garibaldi. that has given some people some release and some 
some stress relief. So you mentioned that you've been playing for a while now. Do you remember the moment when your colleagues first found out that you had this talent? What was that like? Well, you know, I think a lot of physicians have talents that don't always come out in the hospital. Probably the, mm. the first time it was widely known that I played a lot of guitar was, was when I brought my guitar onto the ward. We had a, um, a patient who uh, had an instrument in his room and, uh, you know, he was, you know, it, it, it's hard being in the hospital, it's stressful being in the hospital. If you can restore just a little bit of normalcy, um, it makes a big difference. So I just brought my guitar and, and we played blues in, in the hallway for about an hour. And I think that was the first time that people other than my close friends really knew that this was something that I spent a lot of time doing. It was really important to me. I'm sure it really lifts the atmosphere and the mood whenever you bring something that you're passionate about to work, which is also something that, you know, doctors are very passionate about. I'm sure that the coronavirus pandemic has reignited the reason why you got into the medical field in the first place. I mean, it's, it's been the single most important, you know, part of my medical career. I mean, it's been such a privilege to serve on the front lines with the men and women of Johns Hopkins. Um, you know, I had the privilege of, of serving with, with the, the team at Walter Reed and the White House Medical Unit as well. And, and just seeing the way that people have banded together, not just doctors and nurses, but everyone who works in healthcare and everyone in the community who recognizes that we're all in this together. And, and if we work together, we, we can see the end, the end of this, hopefully in we're the next few months to year. What a beautiful way to end our conversation. Thank you so much for joining us. And before I let you go, as we head into the commercial break, I love you can send us off with a few tunes. Sure, I'd be happy to. So excited, can't wait to hear this. Mm -hmm. 